and all concerned authorities to this Foundation Day program. I invite all Executive Council members, Academic Senate members, Finance Committee members, BOS and BOE members, external members of various committees of this university. I invite all deans, heads, deputy registrar, controller of examination and all section heads. I extend very warm welcome to all the teaching and non-teaching staff of this university. Welcome to all research scholars and students, including foreign students, who are receiving certificates today. I invite all those who are participating in this web conference. And once again, I extend very cordial welcome to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Raman Vintesh. Uh, good morning, everybody, and a warm welcome to uh, the 23rd Foundation Day celebrations of Dravi University. Now it's uh, time for prayer. Let's raise for the prayer. I request the uh, friends to help in putting the audio record. Dravi and Fong. Thank you. Once again, welcome everybody to the 23rd Foundation Day celebrations of Dravidian University. Uh, respected uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Learned Registrar, Learned uh, Dean School of Commerce and Management, and uh, today's special personalities. Dr. S. Chalapa, IAS, retired as Special Chief Secretary to Government of Andhra Pradesh in the combined state of Andhra Pradesh. And uh, today's uh, Foundation Day uh, speaker, uh, Professor Garapati Mamaheshwarao Garu, who is associated with Center for Applied Linguistics and Translation Studies, University of Hyderabad, and uh, my other esteemed colleagues. 
deans of schools, heads of departments, section heads, faculty members, research scholars, students, and employees, everybody by name, and citizens of the country. It gives me an immense pleasure for bestowing me a responsibility to preside over this function. Really, it's heartening for me. As we could see from the records, the university has been established in the year 1997 with a major objective of imparting instruction of Dravidian languages, specifically for promotion of Dravidian languages instruction by means of teaching, research, and extension programs. For this purpose, the university has started a few Dravidian language departments which are sanctioned by government of Andhra Pradesh. For instance, the Department of Telugu and Translation Studies, Department of Tamil Language and Translation Studies, Department of Kannada Language and Translation Studies, and so on and so forth. That apart, we have International Link Language Department, Department of English and Communications. And also, we have other important departments like Department of Tulu Language and Translation Studies and Department of Malayalam and Translation Studies. Likewise, we have the study uh, centers. For example, we have Prasaranga, which publishes the books especially relating to Dravidian language and culture. Not only that, they are publishing the other books relating to science and technology and other areas. As per the Dravidian University Act 1997, the university has been bestowed with the functions of promoting Dravidian languages, not only that, also to serve the neighborhood community by means of providing instruction through teaching and research and extension programs in other areas other than languages like science, technology, education, especially computer science and others. And especially on this occasion, we must remember the founding members who are giant personalities, who are scholars, who have brought in this Dravidian University into existence. <coughs> now, in continuation of the uh, names mentioned by Dr. Raman Mantesh, let me also add distinguished judge, Sri uh, V.S. Malimath, now who is also one of the founding members of this wonderful university. That apart, there are members like Sri Kashi Panyan, who has been a distinguished bureaucrat, and also the members who have located the land, especially Srimati Manajakshi and other members who have found a land in this specific area of Gurupalli Mandal. And though popularly it is uh, uh, being posted as Kupam, but yet it's a trilingual junction which is on the borders of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu states. Now, so also, it is time to remember after the completion of 23 wonderful years, the university has entered into its prime youth period. And very recently, the university has been accredited with B grade by NAC and also it has got NIRA Franklin and also it is able to find its place in the Swachita ranking by having a ninth place at the national level. Likewise, there are several distinguished achievements of the university to bring forth. There are 
several faculty members, especially from Indian languages, and also non-language departments like computer science, education, management, and other departments who have been relentlessly working for the cause of development of the university. As has been mentioned by my friend, it has been envisaged as an interstate institution and specifically reservations for the students have been provided to the tune of 10% for the students who aspire to study in this university. And also, the university is able to build four monumental buildings which are given the names of famous saints who are also the social reformers like Yogi Vemana, Narayana Guru from Kerala, then Thiruvalluvar from Tamil Nadu and Saint Basaveshwara from Karnataka. And it's a time to celebrate really. I feel joyful and pleasant to share so many things. And uh, with this presentation remarks, let me now uh, enter into the main function since we have several distinguished persons to speak. Uh, to begin with, now I take this opportunity uh, to request Dr. M. S. Durga Pravina, my colleague, head of the Department of Kannada Language, to introduce Dr. S. Chalapa, IAS Department of Government of Andhra Pradesh, who is to give his blessings on this occasion. Now, over to Dr. M. S. Durga Pravina. Good morning to all. It is my privilege to introduce today's special invitee, Dr. S. Chalapagaru, respected former Vice Chancellor of Dravidian University and former Special Chief Secretary to the Government of Andhra Pradesh. Hailing from a small village at Tutakudi district of Tamil Nadu, born in the year 1952, started his career as Assistant Professor of English in Madurai Kamraj University. In the year 1979, he passed IAS and appointed in Andhra Pradesh. It is inspiring to know that he has written his IAS exam in Tamil language. He attained his LLB degree from Osmania University and a PhD degree in English from Andhra University. He worked as collector for Srikakulam and Hyderabad. He served in several important commissions, including Human Resource Commission. And when government of Andhra Pradesh introduced the strict laws for the abolition of Devadasi system, his contribution in that regard is to be noted here. He also worked for draft on Telangana Panchayat Raj. He was one of the founder members of our Dravidian University who worked for the establishment of this university along with stalwarts like Professor E. I. Subramanian. Dr. Chellagaru is not only a great administrator, but also a well-known writer. Indra Kavya, Styrium poems are his uh, famous poems and he got several awards for his contributions. He has authored several books in Tamil and English. He has translated Gurram Joshua's Telugu work into Tamil. Now it's the time to hear our special invitee, Dr. S. Chalapagaru. Chancellor, Madam Amrada, and friends. I feel very happy to send this message to you. In fact, I wanted to come to the university once again, but due to the pandemic regulations, 
I am unable to come there. I am unable to believe that this university is 23 years old and within a couple of years it will be celebrating its uh, silver jubilee. Friends, <coughs> it was started like an idea from uh, late past Bardian to start a university for all the Tripedian languages in India. Then the government constituted a committee under Aula Samasiv Rao, which is selected its place in the tree in the shy junction of uh, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, and Karnataka. Many vice chancellors have done a wonderful job. I thank them all. And now it is my wish that the research part of this university must go. Uh, you know, in the right direction, benefiting our state, our country, and also the whole world. Into that freedom of heaven, my father let my universe. Uh, now we profusely thank. Dr. S. Chellapagaru for having blessed all of us at uh, Dravid University uh, for a tremendous growth and development in all friends of Dravid University. Thank you, sir. Now, I request Learned Registrar, Madam Professor N. Sushilagaru to give a message on this occasion. Good morning to all, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor T. Anuradha, respected President of this program, Professor D. Srinivas Kumar, Dean, Academic Affairs, Special Invitee, Dr. S. Chalapa, IAS, Retired, Former, Special Chief Secretary to Government of Andhra Pradesh, and Former Vice Chancellor and also Founder of this great university. The eminent scholar who delivering Foundation Day celebrations Professor G. Uma Maheshwar Rao, Center for Applied Linguistics and Translation Studies, University of Hyderabad. All deans, heads, teaching and non-teaching staff, and dear students. We are celebrating 23rd Foundation Day, this great university. The university was established in the year 1997. The great personalities like Nandamuri Tarak Ramarao and former Chief Minister Nara Chandrababu Naidu have brought the uh, thought into reality. Uh, our colleagues are mentioned uh, before, uh, like uh, founders of this university, Kashi Pandyan, V.A. Subramanyam, and also uh, that uh, great personality of this university. The development of this present government, Honorable Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy Garu, Education Minister Adi Mulak Suresh Garu, and our distinct district minister, Sri Pedredi Ramchandra Reddy Garu. Uh, during this foundation day, I proudly bring to your attention that the development activities taking place in this university. We are Conducting online classes, and we have conducted fourth, sixth semester exams of UGPG offline mode. And result was announced 16th and 17th of this month. With utmost care in this pandemic, the admissions are open till 28th October 2020 across all departments for this academic year 2021. The admission process is on and we plan to run the courses as per UGC guidelines and uh, direction of state government of Andhra Pradesh. The university received 20 crores from RUSA grants. We have planned to construct new academic building and hostel for boys and provide infrastructure.
infrastructure support to all departments, particularly language labs. I, I, uh, today is a great day. Last but not the least, be a good person, but don't waste time to prove it. Have a great day. Thank you. Vanada. Uh, thank, thank you, Madam, for giving a precise uh, message, which is quite apt to the 23rd Foundation Day celebrations. Now, let me once again mention that uh, it's an online celebrations we are uh, into on this 23rd Foundation Day, exactly on 20th October 1997. This Dravid University has been established. Now it is 23 full years. Now, because of the prevalence of global pandemic, Corona, uh, we are uh, into such kind of arrangement. Now, uh, it's a series of uh, celebrations, a series of happiness, which is being expressed by uh, our own uh, seniors in the uh, senior functionaries in the university. Uh, now, I take this opportunity to request respected Vice Chancellor, Professor T. Anuradhanar, to give the message. Today's special invitee, Dr. S. Chalapa, IAS Garu, retired, former additional chief secretary to the government, government of Andhra Pradesh, and the former vice chancellor in charge of the Dravidian University Kupam, and today's speaker, Professor G. Umamaheshwar Rao Garu, Center for Applied Linguistics and Translation Studies, University of Hyderabad, my beloved teaching and non-teaching staff, beloved research scholars and dear students, Good morning to one and all. I am privileged to participate in the 23rd Foundation Day celebrations as the Vice Chancellor in charge of this great institution, which is the brainchild of late Sri Nandamuri Tarakarama Ravgaru, the former Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, and it was established through a Legislative Act of 1997. Professor V.A. Subramaniam Garu, Pro Vice Chancellor, initiated this university in no man's land and uh, Sri Kashi Pandian, IAS, Dr. S. Chalapagaru, IAS, and uh, Professor N. Bhaktavashal Redigaru, the well-known folklorist, were instrumental in uh, laying the foundation for the university. Professor Arunachalam Garu, the first vice chancellor, and Professor B. Ramakrishna Redigaru, the founder registrar, have drawn a roadmap for the development of the unique university in the country, serving five southern states to remains and to honor its establishment. On this eventful occasion, I recall the valuable services of eminent civil servants and people representatives, academicians, whose relentless efforts have brought the university to this adorable stage to recognize, to uh, ador adorable stage of recognition in the committee of universities in India. I pay my humble respects and salutations to all of them. We, uh, you are all aware, Foundation Day is an occasion to rededicate ourselves and to resolve to serve the institution with a renewed vision, commitment and integrity. The university has crossed some significant milestones in academic growth, but much needs to be done to take this institution to greater heights of excellence and recognition. I thank former Vice Chancellors Professor G. Loknath Reddy Garu and Professor E. Satinarayana Garu, who sent their greetings and messages this morning. I thank you, sir. Um, 
on this uh, sacred occasion let us all take a note that we will strive hard to achieve the cherished objectives of the university as enshrined in the vision and mission thank you one and all thank you madam thank you for having a having given a wonderful message on this uh, festive occasion now it's uh, time uh, for us to listen to professor garapati uma maheshwar rao garu and in this context now i take this opportunity to request professor jv sachavani garu to introduce the <coughs> Uh, uh, the, the distinguished professor, Professor Garapati Mahamahishwara Garu, to all of us, so that we can uh, have an ambience of and have a feel of his lecture. Madam Professor J. V. Sachavadi Garu, Dean School of Education and HR, request to introduce Professor Garapati Mahamahishwara Garu. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Good morning. I really prou I'm proud to introduce Professor G. Mohammed Rao Garu. He received his uh, PhD from uh, Sunny USA for the thesis in historical linguistics under the guidance of late Professor B. H. Krishnamurti Garu. B. H. Krishnamurti Garu need not be mentioned to any language person as such. He worked as professor and director at University of Hyderabad. But the most important thing that I would like to mention is he is still serving as Indian languages machine translation field. For the past two decades, he is busy with linguistic genetic reconstruction of common source for Dravidian, Mongolian, and Turkish language families. To name a few of the administrative positions he held, he was the head and director, Center for Applied Linguistics and Translation Studies. He was dean in uh, University of Hyderabad. And two, he has so many academic qualifications that I'm only interested in mentioning about the linguistics qualifications. He has two MAs in linguistics, one from Usmania and one from Sunny Stony Brook, New York, New York USA, and MPhil and PhD from Usmania University, Hyderabad. His specialization is computational linguistics, machine translation, phonology, non-linear phonology, linguistics genetics, Dravidian, Mongolian, and Turkic language linguistics. He has not left any linguistic field untouched that I would like to mention. And to name very few of his awards, because the list is very big. Sir, I'm uh, giving only few. Tana Gidgu Ramurti Telugu Award, Tana USA 2019, World Federation of Telugu Ugradi Puraskaram 2009, Visishta Puraskaram of Government of AP in recognition of contribution in the area of 2018. Here I am proud to say that I shared this day along with whom. Government of AP in recognition of contribution in the area of linguistics and information technology 2011. Navya Rishi Sanman Award way back in 2004 in recognition of contribution to the development of computer applications in Indian languages. Research Assistant, National Science Foundation USA, Career Award for Young Teachers in Social and Humanities, UGC, India. And under his able guidance, 32 have been awarded PhD and three are still working for Enfield, 33 have been awarded and BTEC, I know personally, and uh, many in this area knows the person who believes in ideologies, not in positions, who believes in the Acharya Garapati Umamhe Soragaru, Suswagatamandi, the stage is yours. The session is yours, sir. Yeah. Uh, 
Thank you all. Um, <clears throat> thanks particularly to Professor Sachwani Garu to speak about um, many, many words about me, which I may not deserve all the time. Uh, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes, sir. OK, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> respected Vice Chancellor, Professor Anuradha Garu, uh, Professor Sushila, Registrar of the University, and uh, uh, previously, Dr. Chellapa has given his a special invited uh, message, and Professor Srinivas Kumar, and other members and colleagues who are assembled at different parts of the places. It's a great pleasure for me uh, to be invited uh, to deliver a lecture on this occasion. Dravidian University is always a, a special thing for me, not only for me, but most of you. And also all the faculties, all the academia uh, of the uh, five, uh, Professor Anuradhagaru mentioned the five Dravidian states of South India. So it's a great pleasure actually to deliver a lecture okay, on the foundation day of the Dravidian University. It has a very special format and uh, this university is actually the only one in India to be actually run and uh, catering to the needs of these five states, particularly concentrating on the Dravidian languages and also, of course, other disciplines. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to deliver this uh, address. Now, I'll uh, start my lecture. Uh, now I'll, uh, Can you see this one? No. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> now I think you can see, right? Can you see me? Can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'll be asking you in the meanwhile, actually, sometimes uh, whether I'm uh, audible or whether the slides are visible or not, right? Okay, not so yet. today uh, I would like to deliver a lecture particularly on the Dravidian loan words in Old Indo Aryan, a case for Telugu as a source. Okay, now, first of all, I would like to mention. What, what exactly is this kind of thing? Why we are we wanted to do this? The title of the presentation can be reduced to the following question. Does old Indore words, right? The earlier uh, thing was just simply Dravidian loan words in old indo So I'll define what is old indo -Aryan, And also I'll tell you what are the Dravidian loan words. And also what is the case for Telugu as the source of these words, right? Now, the question is, does old Indo-Aryan have Telugu words? I'll present linguistic evidence to the extent that I can evidently answer the question. Yes, the old Indo-Aryan has words borrowed from the ancient Telugu. Here, I will discuss the evidence. The language of the texts of Vedas, the Vedic Sanskrit, and the later form of Sanskrit are technically defined as old Indo-Aryan. Uh, they belong to 1500 to 500 years ago before the Christian era, before the present era. So that is about uh, 3,500 years ago. Okay. <clears throat> the language is known as Pali, or various Prakrits belonging to the middle Indo-Aryan. They are from the 500... Uh, that is about 2,500 years ago. These are called as Middle Indo-Aryan languages. The Sanskrit and the Vedic Sanskrit are the Old Indo-Aryan languages. And the uh, various regional varieties spoken during 300 before the Christian era to 500 AD are called as pre-modern Indo-Aryan languages. The pre-modern they are not the modern Indian languages, but the pre-modern Indo-Aryan languages. 
the apabhramsas finally gave rise to modern indo aryan languages like hindi urdu bengali marathi punjabi odia sinhalese etc etc there are many more to mention the major indo aryan languages i was mentioning so these are the ones which are called as today modern indo aryan languages does rigveda have telugu or tamil words what are these things how do we do answer this question to that okay i would like to provide some answer here it is claimed by many experts in the field that there are a number of words of dravidian origin in the vedas and many more in the classical sanskrit so you have not just a few there are many more dravidian okay which are found in the vedas and also in the later classical sanskrit so all these things go beyond some thousands of years so 3500 years ago is the time frame that is given for those things and many of those who have worked on these include caldwell in 1856 in his magnum opus a comparative study grammar of the dravidian or south indian family of languages and gundat in 87 1872 and kittel in 1894 who have worked on kannada and malayalam have also dealt with the dravidian loans in oh, oh, sanskrit and baro particularly from his papers beginning with 1945 1946 1947 are more important for our point of view here in the shoberg 2009 her book was published by dravidian university from prasaranga okay, this particularly book i was mentioning that is published by the indian university and these are some of the sources for this uh, particular talk and of course uh, it's a kind of synthesis of my uh, thought was from shobar paro found about 20 dravidian words in the oldest veda alone the oldest of the old dravidian uh, rigveda and emino and paper have discussed the probable effects of the dravidian languages on the oldest indo aryan texts the linguistic evidence for dravidian impact grows increasingly strong as we move from samhitas down through the later vedic works and into the classical post vedic literature so it began with the entry into the uh, earliest rigveda and then slowly the number of dravidian words have started increasing with a, with a an impact on the indo aryan languages the earliest form of liturgical texts attested in the early old indo aryan were vedic texts particularly of rigveda dated to have been compiled around 1200 before the christian era that is about 3200 years ago is as mentioned by Melroy and Adams in their work on Indo According to Thomas Burrow in 1946 these words have not in the main been taken from the existing south dravidian languages so mostly what what anybody would think is these dravidian words which are found in the vedas and in the later classical sanskrit must have come from some of these the okay, uh, south indian languages right the, the uh, different uh, dravidian languages like literary language like tamil malayalam kannada or telugu or any other but you know we need to find out and point out which are these languages which have contributed to the dravidian loans in particularly in the uh, vedic and also the classical sanskrit so according to thomas baro he says these may not be from the existing south dravidian languages what are the south dravidian languages these are tamil malayalam kannada thoda tulu kota and kodagu etc these uh, seven are called as south dravidian languages and telugu is not the south dravidian language it is a south center or the central dravidian language further he says the source of the main body is to be sought rather in the extinct dravidian dialects so according to him maybe 
none of the existing Dravidian languages, in his case, the dialects means actually the Dravidian vernacular, so Dravidian languages. What he says is the source for these Dravidian loans in Vedas and the Vedic Sanskrit and the classical Sanskrit must be sought rather in the extinct Dravidian dialects. That is because none of those Dravidian languages that came in contact with the Indo-Aryan can be still alive. Okay. So, Baro further thinks, and he says that Dravidian words in the Rig Veda are the evidence that one time the Punjab and the adjacent areas were at this ancient period occupied by Dravidian speaking population. So, the entire the space that is today occupied by the Punjabi and the other adjacent uh, speech areas were originally were occupied by Dravidian speaking population. And they, when they came in contact with these uh, Indo-Aryan languages, old Indo-Aryan languages like Sanskrit and the Vedic Sanskrit, then Dravidian infiltrated into the Aryan languages. <clears throat> In a series of articles published by Baru on this subject, <coughs> he develops scientific procedures and principles to identify Dravidian loans in Old Indo-Aryan. There are, they are as in the following. The principle of shared etymology is the principle. So he has actually suggested scientific procedures and certain principles, not in a formal way, but I actually developed them into formal uh, principles and then placed them here. It is the principle of shared etymology. In other words, it is the most obvious principle that the word in question has no Indo-European. So if a particular word is of a Dravidian origin, how do you know that? So we would say it must have only the Dravidian etymology and it should never have any Indo-European etymology. What are the Indo-European languages? It's of course, Indo-Aryan languages. And besides these Indo-Iranian, Indo there's a Persian and old Persian, and of and Persian, uh, the Greek, Italian, Latin, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Russian, all kinds of those European languages. If any of those European languages don't have cognates to means these words do not have Indo-European etymology. So they are only borrowings from Indo, uh, sorry, from Dravidian. So the words like Nira in Sanskrit, which has a Dravidian etymology, Nir or Niru, as in pronounced in Telugu, in modern Telugu, and Mina in Sanskrit, but it's cursed cognate in Dravidian language available as mean or mean etc in many other Dravidian languages. So all these these words, words of this kind like Niru and Meenu are very common across all the Dravidian languages, all the 25 Dravidian languages, more or less in that number, they attest these words, but they are not to be found beyond Sanskrit, not found in any other European languages. So that means they do not have Indo-European etymology. So the principle of shared etymology attests that these they are of evidence that they are of Dravidian origin. The principle of frequency of occurrence in Dravidian languages. So the other second principle is the principle of the frequency of occurrence. So if a given Dravidian word occurs in more and more number of Dravidian languages everywhere, that means it is frequently attested in Dravidian languages, but not found. As you have said by the principle first, it has no Indo-European etymology and all very few languages. So the word under scrutiny shall be popularly found in many Dravidian languages. So are the cases like Meenu, Niru are only found in Dravidian languages very frequently, but not found in modern Indo-Aryan languages. They are not attested. Okay, the third principle, the principle of unambiguous etymology. Uh, the word in question must be basic Dravidian root. So it is not just, you know, it is found in some words, but not in some of other Dravidian languages. And also its etymology is doubtful or its meaning is ambiguous. It's not like that. We needed 
in such case if you want to show that it is a dravidian base then it should have basic meaning so it is it, it must have the word in question must be a basic dravidian root so it has an ambiguous etymology etymology in the sense that there's nothing no uh no, there's no question that okay no no or there can be an argument that it could be an indo-european or it could be another uh other munda or other language origin no no not no, nothing of that sort it is perfectly dravidian it is frequently uttered it, it is frequently found in dravidian languages and also it is it has no indo-european etymology in that sense so chandana which is found in all in Sanskrit and of course borrowed into many Indo-Aryan languages, but it is found in all Dravidian languages and it, it occurs as a verb root. So any word which occurs as a verb root has more chances of being the native origin. So Chandu is to rub, to extract something by rubbing. So that is how Chandana is extracted as a Gandha, okay, Sugandha. So so this has a basic etymology with this with a very specific meaning which is common in the Dravidian uh, area, in the region. <clears throat> the fourth principle, the principle of the antiquity of the word in Dravidian. So now the question comes, once you said it, has, it doesn't have an Indo-European etymology, the second you said it is frequently available in the Dravidian, the third you said it is unambiguously available in the Dravidian in its semantics, and the fourth principle is its antiquity. Is it not true that sometimes the word is has spread across all the modern languages but not never attested in the old Dravidian languages? No. Such a word, you must see that it is also attested in the old Dravidian languages by its literature, like, like Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada, and Telugu. These languages have very ancient literature going back by 2000 years back. So that attested in those inscriptions and in that, that means very sure that, okay, these are how of a a time period they are attested with antiquity. So we can say surely that they are of Dravidian origin and not found in the Indo-Aryan. So the example like Pravala, which is found in Sanskrit, not very much attested in the Indo-Aryan languages, but found in Dravidian in the ancient texts like Pavaram or Pagadam in Telugu, both uh, found in the uh, Telugu text and also ancient uh, Tamil text. Kann these are found in the Dravidian languages. And of course, what is the Sanskrit form? It is a Sanskritized variant of the Pavara, Pavaram. And it is also the location of the Dravidian languages around the, the, on the three sides surrounded by the sea. It is the place where actually the Pravas are obtained, the rubies are obtained. The principle of the identity of the sounds native to Dravidian. So for example, the fifth principle says that whether as a particular wrote any, is it a native to Dravidian words? Yes, many times for various other reasons, we get words spread across very frequently across all the languages. Like we you know today we see uh, <clears throat> sugar, the word for sugar found across all the world's languages. Sugar, sugar everywhere, right? In Arabic, Sakhara in um, English sugar and in uh, Latin or sucrase, etc., etc. All of them are related. Okay, shakaram, sucrose, sugar, etc., etc. But you know, all these words are actually derived from the Indian source and then spread across because this is a needed thing. Sometimes, you know, uh, we 